So, um, but do you see like the government approach changing or improving in terms of how they view aging? Yes and no. Um, so they certainly say they are. I mean, aging is one of the, you know, it's a strategic priority. And, and yes, you know, that, that, there's, that there is an, an intention to, um, to put more money into it. But I think the problem is there is a finite amount of money and there is not enough um, money to fund all of the good research in all of the research arenas. In, in, you know, not just in, in, um, in biomedical science, but actually, you know, everywhere. If you, if you look at the, the quality of the science that we are doing, you know, here in the UK, but also worldwide, the quality of these grant, the applications for funding is, is really, really exceptional across the board in most cases. So you're dealing with a situation where you've got a bunch of exceptional proposals and what gets funded is, you know, they can't put it all into aging, much as I'd like them to, they can't. So there's just not enough money for the government to be able to do it. But yes, they are starting to listen a bit. I think that, I, I think it's largely about the, the the, the bang for your buck, if you like. And I think they're starting to see that the potential savings that could be brought about by dealing with the diseases of aging actually are considerable. And the, 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 the sort of soliloquy of that, the, the knock-on consequences, not just for, for, the, you know, for the government coffers, but for, for social care, for quality of life, for all of these things. I think people are beginning to, and the governments are perhaps beginning to, you know, to, to look at that, but obviously they're dealing with a whole myriad of competing interests and, you know, whether or not that actually results in more funding, I'd, I'll wait and see. So I'm looking at the future of ageing, like, I guess, you know, where we you would see ageing being in five or 10 years. So when I look at the kind of therapies, I see kind of two buckets, which is one is uh, like small molecules, which slow down ageing. And then there's some rejuvenation technologies, on Yamanaka factors and things like that, yeah. which you're trying to reverse it. So uh, I guess two questions. One is, would you agree with those two buckets? And two, you know, what do you see as the most exciting? Yeah, so, so, so I think there's more than two buckets. I okay. think you've got things that are trying to slow down aging. I mean, I would say we are trying, we're trying to um, attenuate it, but mm. we are, but you, it, we've got data that actually show it does also slow it. If we mm. treat younger cells, they do age slower. Um, so yes, there's the small molecule slowing aging. There's the, the the buzz that's happening about cellular reprogramming at the moment, and I think it's got enormous potential. I think it's quite early. There are still some big issues to solve there. Um, and then you've got the kind of senolytic approaches, so to get rid of them. Um, and again, you know, I think there are going to be times when that's going to be a good way. There are some, there are some things which are going to, for, for the treating the diseases of aging, that is more than, than aging itself. Um, there are going to be some indications that are more tractable for that and some which are going to need cytostatics or cinemorphics, which is what we are doing. But I think, I think it's all exciting. I think any advance in this area is going to increase our knowledge base. And I think it's not going to be quick. I don't think we're looking at a quick fix here. I'm hopeful that in five to 10 years, we'll be starting to see some of these things trickling down into you know, further trials. There are things in trials. Um, and I think we'll start to see some of the first therapies targeting fundamental aging mechanisms, certainly in the next five years or so. I think it will be very specific mechanisms. I don't think it'll be a systemic thing at that point, but I think you know, given time, it will come. Very hopeful, that sounds good. Um, so can, we, can I just ask, what is your anti-aging protocol? I mean, what do you do to stay fit? So, oh, the simple answer to that is, you know, at the moment I'm, I'm not someone who's taking supplements and things because I'm a scientist at heart and I haven't, you know, I don't doubt there are benefits to some of these things, but I think there are also perhaps disadvantages that haven't yet come to light. Um, so I would say the simple take home message for, for me for maintaining health long life is eat less, move more. Okay. Yeah, that's, yes, that, that seems to be agreed anyway. Yeah. That's... I think if you can maintain, if, relating to the question you asked me earlier, mm. if you can maintain, you know, a, a healthy lifestyle, a balanced lifestyle, I'm not talking about, um, you know, sort of, I'm not talking about taking everything that's fun out of life, but I think um, to, to try and at least 
where you can to take to make healthy options to make sure you get your exercise exercise is actually a really potent drug um you know i think the fasting the intermittent fasting side of things is very interesting i think that's something that there's some there's definitely mileage in there and i think things like your you know the the um the rapologues that sort of thing that, that are coming through are quite interesting from that perspective but yeah i i think it's um if you're talking about having a real measurable and tangible impact on your health as you age actually keeping a healthy diet a healthy weight and getting a bit of exercise is probably one of the most powerful things you can do that's like 80 90 percent of the way there yeah yeah the rest will help but i think that's that's something you can do and it doesn't cost anything yes <laughs> less than nothing if it's eating less so thank you very much for your time today uh, no problem. professor harris and where can people find out about your research and I guess follow the company as well? Yeah, sure. So, so Tanisca has a website, which is www.tanisca.com. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's all of our news and views and uh, all the stuff that's happening and list of things that I'm talking at. Um, I'm speaking at a couple of conferences this year. I'm doing the longevity leaders and the RNA leaders uh, and a few other bits and pieces that, yeah, always happy for people to come there. Um, the, um, uh, the university, if you look for me on the university site, there's, uh, I've got a web page on there. My lab has, my academic lab has a page on there. So, and obviously we're, um, we're being a bit more careful about publication of what we're doing on the company side now, obviously, because of intellectual property, we need to make sure we've got all the ducks in a row there. But on the academic side, all the papers are out and they are all freely available. Thank you. So uh, the speeches, uh, the, the talks, you're, you're physically physically going there? Um, uh, yes, po- yes, <laughs> I am. Yeah. yeah. So it's the first time I've been out in public and done a talk in public since, well, since all this began. So yes, the um, the RNA leaders is in Switzerland, and I'm taking my first international flight next month. So I'm actually really quite excited. That was a heck of a, yes. I mean, I, I miss that. <laughs> like no trouble. Me too. Me yeah. too. <laughs> These, I mean, it, it's amazing the technological platforms such as this you know to bring this stuff out there that you can do from the comfort of my own office here at home um it is great but actually as a a presenter there's no substitute for the feedback you get from your audience in person and those conversations that happen over coffee are actually quite often where a lot of my big collaborations have come from so i really miss that yes i understand me too okay thank you so much no problem